I have a song I love to sing since I have been redeemed of my Redeemer, Savior, King, since I have been redeemed. Welcome back to Bible Talks. I'm Chris Kramer with the Northside Church of Christ in Russellville, Kentucky, and we invite you to worship with us every Sunday morning at 9 o'clock and Wednesday evenings at 7 o'clock. So if you'll just look us up on the internet, you can find out more about the congregation, or you can just contact us at northsidechurchofchrist at hotmail.com. If you'd like to go to our website, just do a Google search and uh, look for Northside Church of Christ, Russellville, Kentucky. You'll find our website that has links to our Facebook page, our YouTube channel, and many other resources that you can use to contact us and learn a little bit about the congregation here in Russellville, Kentucky. Normally, Nick Greenman is with me. He preaches over at the church in Morgantown called Christian Home Church of Christ. Um, he's had some, um, uh, his family has had some medical issues this week, and I told him to uh, take a break from uh, Bible Talks this week, and we'll just talk about some different things. Even though we've been going through the books of the Bible for this year, uh, we're, we'll take a break from that and talk about something else today that I hope uh, our topic will be very timely in regard to what we see in our society, Uh, but uh, we'll get to that in just a moment. We hope that you'll uh, keep Brother Nick and his family uh, in your prayers. Well, let's talk about uh, some things pertaining to the Bible. Uh, If you will take your Bibles and follow along in the scriptures that I'll give today, we need to have Bible answer for all that we do. And this is true even when it comes to the sin that we see in the world. Uh, You may ask yourself the question, how involved should we be in, you know, worrying about the sins of the world? Um, Should we just do our thing and not worry about Satan and what's going on out there? Uh, Should we just involve ourselves in in teaching of the gospel and the love of God and and not worry so much about what a lot of people might consider judging uh, the sins that are around us? We take it as a personal responsibility to spread the word of God because this is the way that God has intended since uh, the beginning of the church that you read about in Acts chapter 2. And of course, before that, when Jesus ascended uh, into heaven, he gave that commission to his disciples to go into all the world to make disciples of all nations, to bring people to Jesus Christ. That's what we're striving to do. And so a lot of people just want to look at uh, the idea that well, you know, I'm going to do my thing and you do your thing and just, you know, keep out of my business. Mind your own business, in other words. And um, there are a lot, I think, even in the religious world today that that tend to have that attitude that, well, you know, if they want to live a certain lifestyle or a certain way in society, well, you know, that's them. I just don't want them throwing it in my face or expecting it of me. And there have been a lot that claim to be Christians that... uh, have kind of followed that that plan or that pattern, you might say. So we have to ask ourselves, you know, really, um, should we just let the world die in its sins? Should we let those that we know in the world die in their sins? It may come down to family members or friends or neighbors or people that we especially care about uh, in, in our relationships with them. And so we find ourselves in a very difficult position, you might say, to judge one another in regard to what they should be doing to make things right with our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. You know, much like Jesus, Christians need to feel mournful over the state of affairs going on in our world today. We see it primarily in our nation. We see it being made in the the political realm in regard to uh, more and more leniency and laws allowing uh, really sin and things that go against God and his world to uh, to take place. And I'm not going to talk about all those sins directly today. All you've got to do is turn on your news and you're going to hear, uh, get an earful of them, you might say. And so everyone knows what we're talking about when we talk about the sins that we see in society today. Yet at the same time, people are wanting to evoke the name of Jesus Christ and they want to be a child of God. They want to be a church member. They want to preach that God is love to the point that he ignores his word and he just accepts everyone as they are. That's the rallying cry of the world today. In Luke chapter 19, verses 41 through 46, and I'll be looking at several passages this morning, so we'll be kind of back and forth in our scriptures. Um, 
So Luke 19, 41 and following says, As he drew near, he saw the city and wept over it, saying, If you had known, even you, especially in this your day, the things that make for your peace, but now they are hidden from your eyes. For days will come upon you when your enemies will build an embankment around you, surround you and close you in on every side and level you and your children within you to the ground, and they will not leave you one stone upon another because you did not know the time of your visitation. Then he went into the temple and began to drive out those who bought and sold in it, saying to them, It is written, My house is a house of prayer, but you have made it a den of thieves. Well, this is what's going on in our world today. Yes, this is almost 2,000 years ago, and Jesus looking over Jerusalem and weeping for the state of the city and what it had become. They were misusing the temple. They were misusing the things designed by God to give praise, honor, and glory to his name. So even as Jesus, we too must be bothered by those that have misused the name of God and, of course, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. In Matthew 23, in verses 37 through 38, Jesus again is quoted as saying, O Jerusalem, Jerusalem, the one who kills the prophets and stones those who sent are sent to her. How often I wanted to gather your children together as a hen gathers her chicks under her wings, but you're not willing. See, your house is left to you desolate. We don't want to see our world come to an end. We don't want to see our, our nation, our cities, our communities crumble because of their sins. We have a responsibility because, well, number one, we're, we're in service to God, and all men need to serve God. But number two, we are also citizens of these, these great you know, kingdoms, these countries, the United States of America, uh, where we're coming from you today. And uh, we're, we're thankful for the privilege that we have to have the freedoms to be able to serve God and, and to do His will. But oh, how people are so upset with us because we preach church attendance, we preach baptism, we preach singing and making melody in our hearts to God without the use of instruments and music. That just makes people fume. And it upsets them so much to the point that they they ignore and they, they call us blasphemous and they call us heathens and heretics when we're just quoting what God's Word has to say. We don't speak for God. We speak God's Word. And so when we look at these passages and see how Jesus himself was taken and hung upon the cross because they didn't like the things that he said either, his heart went out to them. He had compassion on them. But he also knew that their end would come because they were not serving God. So we preach desperately because we don't know when the Lord's going to return. We don't know when uh, the last day will be. But we do know that God has given us a word and a message that we can prepare ourselves or prepare our eternal souls so that we can have a home in heaven with him for all eternity. Everything that we enjoy in this life while we're here in this life this is not what we're living for. We're living for that home in heaven that God has promised us through his son, Jesus Christ. And we want everyone to get there. Narrow is the way, certainly. But those who seek will find it. And they need to stay on that way and not go down the broad path that many will follow in regard to sin. We can't tell the difference between good behavior and sometimes bad behavior because we're so used to seeing it. We see it on the news. We see it from our neighbors. We see it when we go out in the community and we are shopping. <laughs> Just listen how many times you'll hear somebody angry and mad and using swear words and treating one another bad. Look out there on the roads and see how people drive and how they treat one another. And look how people treat their families. We have law enforcement that's out there always daily having to go deal with domestic abuse and people that are not treating their loved ones right. So how are they going to treat the stranger? How are they going to treat people they don't agree with? Let's just talk about basic manners for just a moment. You know, we're sorely lacking in basic manners in our world today. You know, what happened to the days of holding a door open for a lady? Well, that's become offensive to the, um, uh, you know, to certain women out there in the world today. You know, they can do things for themselves, you might say. And there are those that want to show their independence to the point that they don't need a man doing anything for them. Well, can't we do things just because it's polite? Can't we do things just because it's respectful toward our fellow man? 
It's not about holding a door open for a lady, but holding the door open for a child. Holding the door open for the next big tough guy that wants to walk into this store. You can do that for him. And it's not a matter of, of making someone feel like they can't uh, provide for themselves or do for themselves. It's about being polite. When are people going to start accepting that in the world today that people are just trying to be nice to one another? Aren't those the kind of people you want in our world? Aren't those the kind of people you want to befriend you? Yet, we can't even use the terms today, male and female, because we don't know who's going to be offended by those things. It's, it's getting ridiculous, folks. And you know this, and as I said, I'm not going to try to talk about all the society's woes specifically, but... Some things are just too weird, you just got to mention them, because they go right back to the same heart of the problem. No one has manners anymore. No one has a true respect toward one another, so of course they're not going to have a respect toward God and His will. Of course they're not going to have a respect toward the authority in the church, when you don't see it even in the world today. When do people dress up for events like funerals, uh, interviews, you know, or even going to church anymore? Everything that used to be so important and formal in life has become so casual. And people tell themselves in their minds, Oh, I don't need to do that. I don't need to do my, my best for God. And everyone has an opinion in regard to what the best is. There was a lady who recently passed away, and she asked me to speak at her funeral um, before that day. And I'll never forget one time I got into the pulpit without a tie. And she said, A preacher can't preach without a tie on. She was kind of joking and all, but, but uh, you know, she'd grown up in a society when, you know, men got up to speak the word of God and they did so as respectful as they could. So I always made it a point to wear a tie. Yes, that's a society thing. Yes, it's an opinionated thing. But I remember at her funeral, I, I made sure I wore a tie. And so when you look at just respecting one another and respecting your fellow man, just kind of do the best that you can. Um for their sake as well. Well, doesn't anyone say yes sir and yes ma'am anymore? I was taught that as a as a child. And I have to admit, in society it's easy to get away from that. But yet I've kind of, you know, reminded myself as I get older in life, uh, I can still treat the younger with respect as well. It's not just a term that's reserved for an old man or an older woman. Uh, we become accustomed to what we see regularly around uh, our lives, what we befriend, what we see on TV, what we see in the movies. And we emulate those things so much to the point that we do not hear curse words when they're said anymore. We do not see disrespect when it's done and performed anymore because we make it a part of our daily lives. We enjoy it as a form of entertainment. And so what do we see when we look out in the world? How how long will it take before we get used to the problems of homosexuality, uh, transgenderism, uh, many of the things that are out there today that are becoming widely accepted, not only in the world, but in churches as well that claim to proclaim the name of Jesus Christ. What about adulterous marriages? These things have become very accepted for so long, and the relationships between man and woman as well. You see it performed in the movie theaters and people invite them into their homes through their TV and um, we get all up in arms about the new things that are happening in our society but we become desensitized to the things that have been around for some time and the more we see it the more we're around it the more the world promotes it the more I believe that Christians as well are going to get used to it and you'll find that they too don't want to judge sin as sin and they become desensitized to Satan's wiles. What about violence and hatred? All these things you see daily. We applaud it. And um, what are we doing to uh, show you know, Jesus Christ and a love for him in our daily lives? Not just when we go to church and we quote unquote put on our best behavior. Did you ever tell your children that growing up? You know, okay, we're going to church now. You know, be on your best behavior. Um, we should say that every day of our lives. We should make that a point of every uh, decision that we make in our lives. We need to be careful of the friends that we keep. In 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 33, the scripture says, Do not be deceived. Evil company corrupts good habits. We remember that. Evil company 
company corrupts good habits. But let's focus on that first part. Do not be deceived. One of the things that Satan tries to do is deceive you. He did it in the very beginning with Eve. But you can't blame Satan. We will uh, reap the consequences of our own actions. It's easy to point the finger at someone else that made the suggestion. But we're the ones that said, yes, Satan has no power. He can't do anything to you uh, bodily, physically. He cannot destroy your soul. Only you can allow those things to happen. The Satan can merely suggest. And so he makes suggestions. He sometimes is that little voice that whispers into someone's ear that, hey, it's okay. Don't worry about it. And we justify ourselves because we've given ourselves over to the wiles of Satan. Galatians 1, 6-7. Paul the Apostle here states, I marvel that you're turning away so soon from him who called you in the grace of Christ to a different gospel, which is not another. But there are some who trouble you and want to pervert the gospel of Christ. So again, there are some that have suggested things about the gospel of Christ. They can't change the gospel of Christ, but because they put it in your ear, they put it in your mind, you become desensitized to sin, and you start to view truth in a different way. Ask yourself, from where are you getting the source of your belief about biblical things? Is it the Bible? Is it God? Is it from his people in the church? Or is it the way the world looks at these things? When we consider the ways of the world, we see a great amount of sin. Many things that are contrary to God's, God's, world, God's will. Pardon me. Um, we can see it for what it is. But you've got to know the Bible in order to do that. You've got to study the Word of God to know the difference between right and wrong. Because the sword of the Spirit is that which divides the soul, you might say. It helps the heart see the difference between right and wrong. And if you're not a student of God's word, searching the scriptures to find out what is so, Acts 17 and verse 11, then how are you ever going to know? Everything's just going to be your opinion about things. Everything's going to be based upon just how you feel about a certain thing rather than the facts of what God's word has to say about a certain thing. So we have to be very careful. You know, in 1 Timothy chapter 4 and verse 2, he warns, Paul the Apostle warns Timothy, there are those that speak lies and hypocrisy, having their own conscience seared with a hot iron. It's easy for us to become desensitized. Our conscience might be seared. And when something is seared with that hot iron, let me tell you something, that's not something that's easy to fix. Because you find people in their own conscience based upon not the truth, but based upon how they feel, based upon what they see in the world, based upon what they see accepted by society as a whole, and they do not regard God's Word because it's too foreign to them. You know, it hasn't been that long that some of the things that we see in modern-day society have been going on. But it also has been going on long enough for people to have become confused. Where young people, even children, are confused and Many of them don't even know how they want to be identified, whether as a boy or a girl, no matter what their biology has to say, or in this case, what God has to say. And it's sad that people have not been educated regarding God's Word. People say, well, that's just brainwashing. Well, you know, leaving a child to themselves is brainwashing as well. Unfortunately, the evil has not been scrubbed away. People have not been washed clean they have not sought purity in their lives. And they're confused about things in this life. And you find more and more that are out there not becoming part of the church of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, but seeking to find spirituality in their own way. They don't even like the word religion anymore. They don't like the word organized religion or whatnot. And I fear for the generation that's coming because of the new and um, you know, strange ideas that are coming along. Every generation has dealt with them. But I have to say that even in my lifetime, for half a century now, <laughs> I, I've never seen anything like this. I don't know whether it's because I'm getting older, uh, that I fear it more. But uh, I've never seen anything like this, and it worries me. Where is it going to start, though? Well, it starts in the home. Parents, you have a great responsibility toward your children. And if you're not teaching your children the right ways of the Lord, then you are doing them a great disservice, and you will be held accountable. We have examples in the Bible, like Eli, who did not correct his sons 
when they sinned before God. And, um, you know, he was rebuked for that. He was punished for that. And when we stand before God in the day of judgment, we're going to be held accountable for the way that we rose, uh, corrected our children, rebuked our children, spoke to our children, or let them do whatever they wanted to do so they can experience the things of this life. Let me just tell you something about raising children. If you don't raise your children, somebody's going to. If you don't correct your children, somebody's going to. If you don't show them the disciplines of the Lord, well, then nobody is. And unfortunately, many people have to come to the Lord on their own, you might say. Now, we're all personally responsible for our uh, relationship with God. I, I'm not disagreeing with that. But I'm saying it's why I make someone work so hard all their lives to find truth. Because their lives have been like the prodigal son. Their lives have just been destroyed because of sin. And there are many that I believe in the next generation that's going to come that are going to come back to the Lord, broken people. They're going to come back to the Lord because they find that Jesus Christ is the only way out of their sin. That they're going to come back to the Lord because at some point they're going to realize the choices that we made here in the beginnings of the 21st century just weren't. They were not the things that are for wholesomeness and goodness and righteousness. And they're going to be seeking something. And they need to seek the Lord. I would rather we just offer the Lord right up at the beginning. Give a child that opportunity to serve God and to do His will. Bring them up in the training, the nurture, and the admonition of the Lord. I'm going to share a couple passages with you. I'll have to leave the study at this point. But in 2 Timothy chapter 1 and verse 5, we have the example of Timothy, who it's not indicated here that he had a whole lot of members of his family that were faithful to God, but his grandmother and his mother were. Two key people that taught him the ways of the Lord. And it says in this passage in verse 5, When I call to remembrance the genuine faith that is in you, which dwelt first in your grandmother Lois and your mother Eunice, and I am persuaded is in you also. So, young people, where are you getting your information from? Is it your social media accounts? Or are you listening to the faithful and righteous people in your family? And I don't know who that will be. I would hope that it would be a mother and a father, maybe a grandmother and a grandfather, but whoever it might be, latch on to them, listen to the things that they say, follow them in the steps of Jesus Christ. Again, Paul tells Timothy in 2 Timothy 3.15, that from childhood you've known the holy scriptures, which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith, which is in Christ Jesus. I'm just going to say that things like TikTok or whatever, they will not make you wise for Jesus Christ. There's a good way to use social media. There's a lot of bad ways. You know, there's only one light that shines in the world, and that's God's people. And that's the light that you need to seek. The light that comes from the Word of God, exuding the light of Jesus Christ, so that God may be given the glory. Will you give God the glory today? We'll talk more about this next week as we continue some of these thoughts as we take a little break from our studies of our uh, weekly study of the books of the Bible. But I hope that you'll listen intently at these things, and not to rile people up or to anger people, but that you won't become so desensitized to sin. See sin for what it is. Pray about it. Turn to God's Word about it. Understand it. People like to use the term today in society, you need to be educated about our way of life. And I'm just going to say, you need to be educated about your Creator, about the one who put you here in this life. Because one day you're going to face Him. And I don't know if He's going to use terms like you should have got educated, but yet His Word is our education. Will you then seek the education of God's Word and the wisdom of His Word just like this young man Timothy did, that through the Holy Scriptures, he knew the way of salvation. Will you know that way, and how can we help you? The Northside Church of Christ meets in Russellville, Kentucky, and we hope to see you tomorrow morning at 9 o'clock, and that's 689 North Main Street here in Russellville. Our building is located right next to Kentucky Fried Chicken. Easy to find, easy to remember. So we hope to see you tomorrow. If we can help you in any way, please contact us, Northside Church of Christ at hotmail.com. And then we'll see you again next time right here on Bible Talks.
Savior's name.